So uh, thank you for coming for the for the third day. Uh, thank you for attending. So I'm Quentin. I work at Isovalent. We're working on Cilium. So I'm uh, working on the BPF data path there. Um, but the talk for today has nothing to do with Cilium, actually. I'm here to talk about the BPF CI um, and how to reuse it uh, for, for my own uh, development workflow. So um, I don't suppose that everybody here is familiar with the CI already. So the first part of the talk will be to provide an overview of the CI. Uh, so let's go. So we have uh, the BPF CI, which exists still um, since uh, about 2020, I think, during the summer it was uh, set up. It's based after what uh, LibBPF is using for the same, same thing, checking that uh, there is no regression when uh, new commits are merged into LibBPF. Uh, the one from LibBPF, I think, was inspired from uh, the um, Dragon debugger. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and has been working rather well since then. So what it does is um, that it validates every patch that is being submitted to the BPF mailing list. Um, so when a contributor sends a patch uh, by email to the mailing list, the server receives the patch, um, distributes it to all the subscribed people, and also send a message to patch work which uh, is the web interface where you can uh, manage patches, like uh, set the status, um, check the, the, the status for the CI too, and uh, perform a number of operations on patches. And besides, there is a uh, kernel patches daemon, which uh, currently runs on uh, Meta's infrastructure, as far as I know. Um, and uh, regularly boards uh, patch work for new patches. Uh, when it gets a new patch set from patch work, it turns it into a pull request on GitHub, and uh, GitHub is able from that pull request to trigger a run of the CI. So magic happens, and you get a lot of things happening, uh, of, of tests uh, running, and eventually, at the end of the day, you get the results. So uh, it's all very nice. I've got another slide to uh, see a bit more in detail what happens uh, for that request. So Patchwork uh, gets all those patches, all this uh, patch set, and displays them, and, um, and that's great. And uh, the kernel, the daemon patch, uh, yeah, that's it, is able to retrieve those from Patchwork to keep all those patches independently, to keep to turn them into commits on GitHub. And the thing it does that's very important here is that it adds another commit. It inserts a commit uh, between uh, the, um, the head of the base branch and uh, the, the, the patches that we've got. Uh, the other doesn't really matter. It could add the commit at the top, really. But that commit is just copying all files from another Git repository, which is called kernel patches slash VM test. And it copies those files on top of the patches that we want to test <coughs> with the, um, sorry, on top of the patches that we want to test. Uh, <coughs> and then create the, the pull request on GitHub. And uh, part of those files that we are adding uh, to, the, to the repository is one YAML file, which is .github slash workflow slash test.yaml. Um, that is very important in the sense that it describes the workflow that we want to run. And GitHub does this uh, magic thing. When it sees the YAML file, it analyzes it, and it finds that we want to run the CI for all pull requests. So as soon as the pull request is created, the workflow starts, and everything runs. So basically, if you like, the GitHub CI is just like Kuba here. It's giving a YAML file and handle the rest for you. Very convenient. So what exactly happens in the CI? We've got a lot of things uh, running. It starts by downloading the Linux kernel um, sources. If necessary, sometimes the CI needs small adjustments. So if necessary, we patch those files with provided diffs. 
It also installs the tools that it needs, so uh, PA hold, which is built locally, so that we get the latest version. So downloads uh, LLVM, doesn't build it because it's usually not necessary and it would be a bit too long to, well, not too long, but if we can skip it, that's better. Uh, it builds the latest kernel, though, and all the self tests and the BPF samples. Thank you. So we've got how can an image with uh, we are next creating a root FS image, which is uh, the the virtual image for the virtual machine that we run the test. Uh, we are download that image, we uh, copy the kernel that we've created into uh, that rootfs, and we also copy all the, the cell tests that we've built, and uh, the um, VM test files uh, that contain the scripts to, uh, to trigger the, the cell test. And the last step is that we run all those checks uh, in QEMU, mostly, so the BPF tool consistency checks, for example, are run beside QEMU, but that doesn't matter much here. And we run uh, all those groups of uh, BPF self tests. So there is test progs, test maps, test verifier, test progs, um, no idea, 32. Uh, it's not completely exhaustive. We don't have the uh, BPF test mode.ko, which is run in the VM, I think, because the VM does not support uh, kernel modules. I'm not sure about that. Um, so, Basically, that's how the CI works. We just take the patches from patchwork, create this pull request, and everything happens automatically because we have the files to describe how it works. Uh, GitHub is able to, to run it on its uh, own runners, presumably in Azure, and to, uh, to, give, the, to give, the, the, give us the results uh, that show up in patchwork. So um, yeah, if you, if you do want more details on the, on the different steps, there are two good presentations uh, by Michael and David, uh, so have a have a look if you like. That's how the the CI works broadly. Now um, I got to, um, to 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 get some some insight about how it works and to check that okay, just adding the files on uh, on the GitHub repo can trigger the CI. Can I reuse it? For my development workflow, can I also run the CI without having to send my patches, without having to ping people here and there? Can I just do that on my Linux fork, for example? So the answer is yes, it's not difficult. It's just the same thing. What I need to do is copy the file from the test on top of my patches, create a pull request on any GitHub repository, well, any GitHub repository which has the suitable uh, base branch. So I have my own Linux fork with a BPF next branch. I create my pull request, add the files on top, and CI runs just like the same. So it's the same diagram as before. Uh, I can do that. And that's great. Wait, why is that great, really? Why would I like to do that in the first place? So we have, uh, maybe, hold on, sorry, it's not too much of free. Um, there are several reasons for that. Where the main motivation is that I can run the official BPFCI prior to submitting. So that gives me a way to test my patches uh, prior to send them uh, to, the, to the reviewers. So if anything breaks at this stage, it was wasting reviewers' time. Uh, if I had some patches that are not supposed to go upstream because they are backports or because they are from an out-of-tree uh, Linux tree, that could also be a way to, uh, to test them. Uh, one great thing also is that I don't have to care about the setup for running the test. So I don't have any need to install LLVM locally, PA hold. Um, I don't have to worry about the kernel copying that's being used for the test because it's all handled by the CI. And generally speaking, there is no setup issue. Like there is uh, the uh, VM test of this age script inside of the kernel set test repository, which is really helpful to get uh, the test running all right. But even with that test, in the past, I've had some issues. Uh, I can remember the libc version inside of the VM not matching the libc version that I had on my 
development machine and struggling to, to, to make it run the test correctly. So I don't have this kind of issues here. It's all handled by the CI really. Uh, it also allows me to not worry about using my CPU locally. Everything's running on GitHub, uh, GitHub's runners for free. Uh, GitHub has an option to also uh, use self hosted runners uh, if you want something more powerful. We we'll come back to that later. Uh, but the, the, the default is to just run on GitHub's runners, which is free and doesn't uh, make my laptop busy. So that's a good thing also. So that's a screenshot of, uh, of a pull request that I created. Uh, I wanted to test some changes uh, in the in the CI. Um, sorry, not in the CI. Um, for BPA that I was about to submit upstream, so I created my pull request, added um, that uh, that commit in the middle to to add the CI files, and we can see at the bottom that all the checks are green, which is what I wanted. That's great. And, um, and that's about it. So that's what I'm what I've been doing. And I would like to encourage you to just do the same under the CI and have everything working. Well, turns out it's not exactly that simple. So I has uh, I have been running my, um, my 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 patch through the CI. I was happy with it. Everything works fine. And in August this summer I'm picking. I should probably talk about that a little. I should document it somewhere. Uh, tell other folks that it's doable. So I'm about to write a blog post. I write it, everything down. Uh, everything's ready. It's in good shape. I should probably add a screenshot to show that what it looks like. So the, the the screenshot I showed you earlier, basically. So I go to the uh, GitHub interface, create another uh, CI run, and it doesn't work. It's broken to me. Uh, so what happens is that. All the GitHub runners are in a pending state. And no runner is picked by the CI to run my checks. So what's happening? Um, so it's simple. A few weeks before, there was a change introduced in the CI uh, that changed the YAML file to tell the, the CI to only run on self-hosted runners. So that means don't use the GitHub runners. Instead, use those machines that I configure here, uh, presumably, presumably on AWS, I think, for the for the for the official CI, and um, and don't run anything otherwise. So that's uh, that's very good for the BPF CI. That's not good for me because I don't have configured any machines on the AWS. So the motivation for that change was uh, totally legitimate. Uh, it was to get more powerful runners to avoid hitting some, um, some timeouts when running the CI, and uh, also to be able to run on different architectures, uh, knowing that uh, GitHub only offers uh, x86 runners. So uh, with that change, uh, well, it was possible prior to that change, but it would help run on uh, S390 uh, machines as well. Uh, it's easy to fix, like, it's easy to work around that on my side, but it does mean that I have to edit the YAML files, which I would prefer not to do. Uh, so now this has been not reverted, but the, the, the constraint has been lifted if the CI is not run from the uh, official uh, kernel patches uh, GitHub organization. So that means that if I'm running the CI on my own account on GitHub, uh, this enforcement of running on self, uh, self hosted runners uh, is not applying and I can, again, uh, just copy all files and run the CI. So thank you for, for that, Daniel. Um, but uh, the point is uh, that the CI is not really ready to, to be used like I did, or at least it's not ready to be used in that way for anything more uh, more serious, I mean, for Product for production workflow, not production, but for solid development workflow for bigger projects, for example. So it's fine for me uh, if I were a bigger organization trying just to hook onto the current state of the CI. That would probably be dangerous to do because uh, first thing is it's actively being worked on, so it's still a work in progress. Uh, so that's a good example of something that broke. 
uh, it hasn't really been designed to do that. So there is uh, some reusability between the components of the CI. So between uh, what's running for the BPF and what's running for uh, the, the batch that are sent to the BPF mailing list, some parts are being reused, but it's not being designed to be reused by other organizations. And um, so, ideally, maybe there could be things to um, to do to that to, to make that a bit smoother to make sure that uh, someone else like me or like a bigger project could reuse the, the CI um, without those uh, those risks. So from there, we have some questions that I'm trying more or less to 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 solve to to address today with uh, with this talk. Um, which are okay. We have the BPFCI. It works very well to check the BPF patches. Uh, there is future work for that CI. I mean, there are some people contributing to it. I'm not here to present the future work for the CI, but how can you, how can we instead make the CI easier to reuse? How can we share it uh, more easily with other contributors who would like to use it? Uh, so just one disclaimer I'm not in charge of the project. I've been contributing a few commits to the BPFCI, but I'm not here to tell uh, the, the folks working on the CI, you should do that, and uh, I expect you to make it super reusable. No, I just want to propose um, so some uh, leads of reflection uh, of uh, thought and to, uh, to trigger maybe some discussion. So maybe we could uh, first thing keep consolidating uh, the CI between uh, lead BPF and the VM test repositories. Although, to be honest, there has been a lot of work done uh, on that already. Uh, but the more we can um, turn into blocks that we can reuse elsewhere, the easier it will be to, to share it. And same thing, can we turn what we have into the VM test repository, which um, is the YAML file describing the, the, the overall uh, CI workflow? And a bunch of scripts to uh, to trigger the test. Can we maybe turn that into a dedicated uh, GitHub action that other scripts, uh, other repositories could reuse? Uh, could we also define, I don't know, maybe a set of guaranteed workflows? So if I run my CI, do I have the guarantee that uh, this test and this test and this group of tests will be run, and that they won't be removed uh, the, the next day? It's, uh, it would be nice, but at the same time, it's all the time a balance between the work that's being done to improve the CI uh, and the, the, the constraints that we would like to, to add to it if we want to reuse it uh, with more people. Uh, the last item I have here is that I've heard, so uh, Dave mentioned yesterday, that GitHub uh, is an issue for some contributors. So uh, would there be a path forward to move out from that? But uh, seeing the investment that, uh, that was put into the current CI, I don't see that happening anytime soon. But again, I'm not in charge of the project, so couldn't tell for sure. Um, and as part of the discussion, I would like also to well, talk about the situation. That's what I'm doing today. And ask around if uh, there are some other people doing just like me, like reusing or intending to reuse this CI. Um, so from what I know, I know that uh, some other kernel subsystems uh, might be using it in the future, likely in other kernel patches, GitHub organizations, so likely uh, doing just like the BPFCI does uh, using the, um, the blessed organization and infrastructure. Um, I think uh, maybe uh, the, the, the networking subsystem could be a, a good candidate, but I'm not really involved into, into that. Um, I know that we've been thinking about it for uh, the Linux fork we have under the Senior organization too, uh, mostly as a way to test the patches that we could either submit online or if we were to have a few patches uh, on our sites to, to, yeah, just to make some tests for one thing or another. Um, so same thing, trying to reuse it for the, for the development workflow. Uh, I'm also thinking, so I'm contributing a lot on BPF tool, I'm also thinking of possibilities for a BPF tool CI, which is not here yet, but I would like to, I would like it to happen someday. And is this a good thing to uh, to look at for BPF tool? And I don't know, maybe there are others that would like to to do the same and that could benefit from the CI. 
So I see <laughs> maybe buff. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. Certainly buff. So that's good to know. Um, and just wanted to point out on Daniel's suggestion uh, that the kernel CI project is also existing. If you were not interested too much into testing the BPF um, aspects, like if you, if you're not after the BPF uh, self test, but something more generic, there are some other uh, CI projects related to kernel elsewhere, so that might be worth checking. So last thing is that I just wanted to thank the people who have been contributing to the CI, so Andre, Daniel, uh, Mikola, Sage, Yukong, uh, and probably others that I forgot. Uh, so thank you for uh, working on that, for documenting that into other presentations. And thank you also to all of you for attending the presentation this morning. And if you have questions, I'm glad to take them now. Yes. Yes, uh, okay. I can repeat the question. Uh, so basically, I'm the uh, I'm one of the uh, previous staff admins, and uh, we are handing the also one to the URM tree and everything. And so for having all of these uh, version actions, all it has done, uh, what we plan on doing or what we already do, like for some other project and Python, is directly include the CI inside the kernel tree. Like we would have our scripts directly inside the kernel tree, which means that you basically, even if, because I'm not familiar with GitHub actions, but I think you have to have in the, in the past got GitHub uh, splash something. Well, on GitHub, it's more flexible for that. But you could have just your single patch and say, just take the script from that directory and run it, which means that you don't have problems with version actions, because whenever you know that the CI is working at this kind of version, then you can just pop the kernel tree and you just want this. That's a suggestion. Okay, so that's not a question, but a suggestion repeating for the um, for people uh, following remotely. Uh, Benjamin uh, is saying that for free desktop, what they're doing is that they're not having the um, YAML files describing the workflows uh, on GitHub or GitLab, but instead that they're having it um, as part of the kernel tree itself so that we just have to fork the, the, the kernel on GitLab to um, to get the CI running. I think that's that would be theoretically, I think that would be doable for uh, GitHub too. Uh, we would have to store those files in that GitHub. Well, that's what we're doing for CM. So yeah, it's definitely doable uh, to store them in the tree. So thank you. Have them as a top level kernel, right? Will Sorry. You, able, you need to put them. Yeah. Will you be able to upstream this? Uh, I don't think so. It's like just uh, like one single step that's easy. Move it to the top level of the own port. That's project there, right? But then, like, it's, it's very BPF specific. Like, you will put a folder in the top level of the kernel tree just for BPF. But you can, you can probably script that, though. So. I mean, if you want to run the the, the, um, the test for for this subsystem, just run this script with that argument, and it compiles the files for you. And well, there's a lot of machinery in getting the workers. The GitHub action that starts the kernel does its drawbacks, so it's not just run that script. Yeah. yeah, KPD already doing all this, right? Yeah. KPD, KPD is the script technically, right? Yeah. It focus, uh, yeah, essentially, yeah. The offloading the script is like, hey, is that a machine with it? Well, I think let's go over the question. So, to make CI easier to reuse, I think Daniel made outstanding job moving uh, big parts of code into the libbpf uh, slash CI repo. So many things already migrated from the VM test and from the libbpf, libbpf into centralized location. Yeah. So this is happening. Um, so that's that's this diagram. Basically, you have uh, all these uh, GitHub actions which are already shared between libbpf right. uh, and VM test, and the uh, scripts in VM test pulls the actions, and uh, everything is. Uh, 
uh, launch from the kernel patches slash PPF test where the CI is run. That's correct. So you yeah. can. I think we can consolidate this some more, but um, we don't have immediate plans for doing so because to me the benefit is not immediately obvious. To be honest, from an outsider's perspective, it doesn't really make a change to how PPFCI can be reused, right? unless you really want to hook into the individual steps. So, so what do you mean? Uh, what I mean is so. We deduplicated or consolidated a bunch of the functionality in one repository that was previously split among two. But that doesn't really have a bearing to anything that you present in terms of the reuse, right? The reuse workflow that you lined out is unaffected by this effect. It's more an internal refactoring. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. But that means that in like API that we have a like exit endpoints that we can see It's hard to write API. But you know like we already have all things that could be uh, refactored, but already refactored with the yeah. yeah, but it's in the most better state now. Yeah. So, like, right now it's only has like uh, test methods in the uh, repository itself. Basically, we, we know what should be around. Yeah. But there is no reviews. Yeah, like they were changing what kind of arguments, what is required. Right. Right. So, right. this has been going on in the last few months. I think we're in the most better state now than. Um, so there may be some refinement that still need to happen to make sure that we can come up with some Yeah. So to uh, change the direction of the discussion completely, so I think the whole idea of just like hacking into like internals of the CI was <coughs> destined to fail, uh, as you realized, and I don't think we should be like supporting it or even like thinking about it, like because. What you wanted in the first place is to like run CIs for your own like private patches or some RFC stuff, maybe something that no one wants to see. So this is a good goal and this we should achieve, but I'm sure there are like ten different ways to do it. For example, what we can do is to have like a separate payment list with a separate like orthogonal patch works just for this kind of stuff and you just submit to this payment list and everything else is the same. CI will take it up from the it will appear in patch works the way it is right now and the whole workflow is the same and then everyone who's working with CI can continue working on the program. We you can actually do the story. So like the only thing you need to do is to create pull request into kernel patches PPF and you will use our AWS runners, you will use IBM runners, you like it will be exactly the same workflow as you will do when you will send the actual patch of stream. So we, you mean running it from the um, kernel patches organization? Basically you fork kernel patches PPF, right? Yeah. Then uh, you create pull request from kernel patches PPF uh, from your fork to kernel patches PPF. And it will start. Uh, CI. You just need to put CI files on top of your. Uh, that's that's what I. What, what's the difference uh, with what I've been doing? You've been doing it against your own form. Yeah. What Nicola suggested is really doing it against the kernel patches. Yeah, you need to create yeah, yeah, yeah. requests to kernel patches PPF. Yeah, you reuse all our CI machinery exactly the same as if you send patch to the mailing list. Okay. We were also talking about the fact that this team of works so that CI files are always in the last That is the price. Well, the problem is that we don't have a directory that we just discussed. This is the last thing, the last step that we need to figure out, but otherwise, so it's good. Find the team that contains the CI. Because, you know, like, who's the lightest of stream master? You can also add temporary. Not temporary, but like, something. <laughs> so, like, 
everything is already ready in the in this repository. So what you just add patches on top. The only the only thing that like there is one uh, pitfall that if you will create this pull request for the first time, uh, someone should approve it. Yeah. From, that's, from the, but we need, we need to let the GitHub signings per repository. Yeah. It would be really cool to document the documents that are just, you know, in the or whatever. I guess all concerned then is that people's family is working, probably too much cleanup to work now with the full person for one day or so. This is this is when this feature that someone should approve you for the first time to execute this CI is very handy, right? Yeah. So you can uh, you know that okay this uh, person is legitimate and you approve them they run and then uh, you can run it uh, on his own. But that's not a problem. Like you can it's like you can tell us when you pull request if you want the GitHub one. Well, they use the source every single time that you have their jobs to like, get around all the jobs. Right, so if you're going to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. The approval is, is multiple times. If you don't actually get anything merged, you have to do the approval. Time to use this one as the... Uh, yeah, this is just a... Thanks for this discussion and thank you.